honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the SportsStuff.com and also brought to you by the Oddman Media Network. Here are your hosts, Paladino Joey and Marcus the Forecaster. Logan Timberwolves fans, are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is on the sportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to the show. It's time to talk basketball again, and for the first time since July or so, which was a really cool Super Mario Brothers 2 themed uh, episode. <laughs> Me, myself, and uh, Vince Germano, the people's champ. And we still never got around to uh, Showtime and T-Wolves, and I deeply apologize for that. And I, both of us have been stupidly uh, busy. That's why you don't see the courtside podcast as much either. Uh, hopefully we can get him on again soon, and I haven't reached out enough, but schedule's getting away there. You get the idea. That's partially why this show hasn't been released and, of course, moved, got married, all that good stuff. I'm no longer a Golden Valley resident. I'm a Brooklyn Park resident. So, a lot of adjusting and such to do, but luckily I was able to record Purple Mafia twice and Brave the Wild, did a season preview for that one. So here I am to do a season preview for Timberwolves Explosion. Yeah, Timberwolves Explosion and the NBA and such, and getting caught up with a couple of things that have taken place uh, in Timberwolves land, and maybe banter around into some NBA stuff if I feel like it, per se, but (laughs) it's mostly going to be kind of a preview and getting caught up, like I just said. Three-segment show, Timberwolves... uh, Hardcore in the first uh, segment, second segment, season preview, third segment. Briefly get into some fan interaction, as there has been a bit over the course of time. So I'll try to get caught up on that without going too crazy. So, it's like a Timberwolves State of the Union, kind of, sort of. Even though the State of the Timberwolves was back in July. This is like State of the Union, but I suppose it's the same thing. Ah, Flip Saunders. Yeah, well, yeah. Very, very uh, sad situation going on there. It's not news to like 99% of you listening right now or anything, but this is the first time I was able to address this on air and talk about it and all that. And of course, uh, not a huge amount is known because, well, they they want privacy. The family has requested privacy in the situation, and I agree with them 100%. I would not want any of my information going out if something like this was going on. But uh, it was announced in August that Flip Saunders, head coach, and president of basketball operations for the Minnesota Timberwolves has uh, cancer, and it was it's a Hodgkin's disease, but it was talked about how it's so it's very treatable, like eighty percent survival rate, all that, very treatable. Everything should be okay, and that he already had it in June actually. So it was actually before the draft that uh, they already had diagnosed him with it. Basically, it was like sometime in the mid June. I didn't write down the date. But at the end of the day, it's not the date isn't important. It's just the fact that it's going on. Um, but things were going okay. It's not good or anything, but he was going to resume coaching and maybe be kind of like a George Carl, you could say, kind of just continue coaching and, and such and be, even be the president of basketball operations. And then a month later in September, it was like, uh, okay, this is not going to be, uh, Flip, Flip Saunders is not going to be available. And this isn't going to be weeks. It's going to be months. So Sam Mitchell will be the interim coach for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And again, we would like to have a, uh, yeah, this will be a major privacy situation here. We, uh, we're we not going to pry about any information going on. But uh, talk is that he has been hospitalized. And is it complications with the treatment or is it the cancer itself uh, getting much, much worse? We don't know. <clears throat> and that's quite unfortunate. And then it got to a point where he's still hospitalized, even to this day. And it could be life-threatening. And um, the Dan Barreros of the world that knew Flip very well, no Flip very well, no Flip very well, pardon me, how it went from text messaging to absolutely zero because he used to text to Flip frequently. His close friends and all that good good stuff. You know, Flip's Friday Funkadelic. Those of you locally that listen to KFAN and Dan Barrero. Um, just a, a wonderful segment or multiple segments 
of a show. It was, it was usually an hour, usually an hour, but may, um, maybe not. It was it would vary an hour, half hour, whatever it was. But a real fun uh, part of the show there for Dan Barrero. They knew each other well, and to see the text go from um, frequent to, to infrequent, but kind of in and out to zero. It, it sucks, and he's, he's scared right now, and a lot of us are, and he's saying how the situation is, is definitely something to be concerned about, <laughs> to be worried. It's it's kind of hmm, ominous right now. So I urge everybody out there to continue your prayers for Flip Saunders, those of you that have, and those of you that haven't yet, please pray for Flip Saunders at this point in time. Um, very scary. I had a bad dream about the situation, and I'm going to leave it at that. It was not a good dream. And it happened way before it got scarier. That's what creeps me out a little bit about that dream. It happened before uh, September. It was just out of nowhere. So, mm, yeah. <laughs> it's, well, not way before. It happened when it started to get a little bit more serious, basically. So, And then people made it super duper serious. So um, there it is. I hope I don't sound too awkward right now. It's a it's a scary situation. I, again, you can't say all too much, but at the same time, you can really, really wish him the best and thoughts and prayers. And again, I, I can't say too much in terms of uh, there's not a whole lot of information other than it's it's dire. So we try to slide into uh, the next topic here. <clears throat> there's no uh, proper segue to it, but Sam Mitchell, of course, is the interim coach now, and. There's a possibility he might end up being the long-term head coach regardless if Flip returns to coach or not. There's a possibility that Sam Mitchell's the uh, the heir apparent, pretty uh, per se, to the uh, Timberwolves. Be- because it's an, it was an awkward situation. You imagine Flip coming in to be a head coach maybe for a year or two. Then what happens to all these pretty good assistants uh, on the staff? Do they all have to just kind of go back to their whatever they were doing before or, or go catch on with the new coaching staff? But then again, I suppose that's coaching in the NBA anyway. I mean, you know, you're guaranteed maybe a year or two at best as, a, as even a head coach in the NBA sometimes or NHL or any other sport. But, yeah, let's get to the point. Sam Mitchell's the head coach, and yes, he was the coach of the year with Toronto, and it was at the 7 8 season. Coach of the year with the Toronto uh, Raptors. That would be Kamal Hilton's club over there in Toronto, Ontario. If he's listening, shout out to him. And, um, yeah, I always appreciate the retweets. And, again, I'd like to have him on the show just this last summer, man. I mean, I'm telling you, it's a miracle I recorded it all in the summertime. It was that uh, hectic of a summer. Can you imagine working overtime at work? Yeah, working overtime at work. Imagine where the overtime would be. Uh, And then the lawns are ten times harder because it was raining way more than normal. I mean, unbelievable. And then you're getting married so and moving, of course. Can you imagine doing all that at the same time? So it's kind of tough to record a podcast. <clears throat> Luckily, the Timberwolves didn't have a ton of major news after the draft, per se. So there it is. Um, Sam Mitchell, a bit more abrasive than a Flip Saunders type, more confrontational. <clears throat> That's nothing new. That's who Sam Mitchell is. His first his first year or so in uh, Toronto, um, he wasn't a very popular guy, apparently. They even thought that he might get fired real soon. because He was fighting with a lot of guys, including Vince Carter, who I don't like probably... I probably like him less than everybody listening, to be quite honest. <laughs> Almost everybody listening right now looks at Vince Carter like he's some kind of slam dunking god. Yeah, that's great, but um, yeah, there's more to basketball than dunking, and I know you know you know that out there. But again, what did he really ever accomplish other than winning a dunk contest and making great dunks on people in the Olympics? The Olympics, when the USA team was supposed to win by 35 points or something, on, on uh, you know, in, in a in a general situation, so. Whatever, you know, I just don't see him to be as uh, great of a piece of the NBA history as other people out there. That's just me, though. I'm not trying to be a dick about it, so. (laughs) Pardon me, I'm having trouble breathing for some reason. Strange. Can't believe I'm back behind the mic talking about the the NBA again. It's fantastic. Plus, it's kind of hot in here, damn it. Yeah, just a little bit. I like Sam Mitchell a lot. He's a guy that uh, I would have considered as a possible head coach of the Timberwolves when they were looking for a possible head coach. And Sam Mitchell was interviewed for that position back when Flip uh, ultimately decided to be the the head coach for the time being and then brought him in as his top assistant. Could be that he's kind of a potential, you know, head coach in waiting. Who knows what's going to happen. Dave Yeager would have been nice too, apparently. I mean, look at Memphis. Look at the success of that team. And I always bring that up because he was the choice at the time. Like, Flip was ready to hire the guy. 
and doggone it, Memphis did what they did. Mm. Wasn't it wonderful? Wasn't that just a wonderful thing? <laughs> so let's jump into training camp, preseason, additions, all that stuff. So the Wolves bring in two veterans. They're getting even older. So how we're talking about we're getting younger and all that. But then you still have uh, Kevin Garnett. You still have Kevin Martin, who we'll talk about him in a, very soon here. So you get old guy. You have a couple of old older guys. So Kevin Martin is like 33. Garnett is 39. And then you bring in Tayshaun Prince, who's closer to Kevin Martin's age, a little bit older than him, about 35-ish already. Wow, that's crazy. And Andre Miller, who's actually even older than Kevin Garnett. So it's like, okay, I, I like Lorenzo Brown a lot. And I was talking about that on the last show. When uh, Vince asked me, do you like Lorenzo Brown? I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I do like Lebr- uh, Lorenzo Brown, a nice third-string point guard who could even be a backup at times. Nice defense, good passing, can uh, explode to the basket, get some layups and such. I've always been a fan of his, but hmm, his, his odds of making this team are like 0% right now unless somebody gets injured. Well, maybe that's Rubio. Who knows what's going to happen there? <laughs> but uh, yeah, Andre Miller's been added to the team. Nice mentor to Rubio and, and even more to Tyus Jones, who most likely will go to the NBDL. We'll get back to that in a second. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> but uh, Tayshaun Prince brings in a veteran presence. Not sure how much playing time he's going to get because there's a conundrum at that position. Small forward shooting guard, per se. Andrew Wiggins, Shabazz Muhammad. You traded away Chase Bunninger and all that for the guy we got back, a stretch four guy. Rudez from Indiana. But then, um, I don't know. <clears throat> you bring in Tayshaun Prince, who's going to warrant some playing time. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing it won't be that much, but still. I mean, hmm. I, I guess it can't hurt. To, you got to improve that uh, culture in this team. <laughs> With this team right now, but after the first two preseason games, you're not seeing a whole improvement defensively, are we? Andre Miller, though, um, what does he bring to the team? A veteran presence, I suppose. A, a mentor. And that's about it. Because not sure much. I mean, what what really he has left in the NBA anyway? It was really a small sample size for Andre Miller in the preseason. But you're pretty much going to see a small sample size for everybody in the preseason for the most part. We can jump into the first preseason game as the whole defensive thing I was talking about. Well, the Wolves gave up 122 points to the Oklahoma City Thunder in uh, Target Center. Yeah, just 122. You know, it's not that bad. 122. 122.99, the uh, <laughs> Oklahoma City Thunder spanked the Timberwolves, unfortunately. Pardon me for that racket. Um, not the, uh, not what the doctor ordered defensively. I'm not sure if and when this is going to happen. And yeah, I was talked to, talk to on Facebook on a different uh, different type of uh, a page out there saying it's not a quick fix here with any of these guys because it's a lot of people. So. I suppose it's still frustrating to watch, though. Threes were coming down like crazy. Guys were just going around the Wolves all over the place. Uh, Towns looks awfully good, though. I mean, he's a nice passer and all that, like we were saying earlier. And he had a he had an assist in the game, which was pretty nice. He blocked two shots, two steals, only five rebounds, which bugged me a little bit. But luckily, that comes up in the next game. <laughs> Andre Miller banged his knee on the floor at one point in this one, which is unfortunate. But... Uh, Bizelka looks really good. Bizelka, I don't know if I'll ever get it right. I'll have to <laughs> have to hear it some more to get it correct. Um, even Rudez hit a hit a three pointer in the game. That's good, or two three pointers. Pardon me. So good for him. But Towns won up with eighteen and five. Gorgi Zhang looked awesome as well. So very positive night for the big man. Towns shooting eight of twelve from the floor though. Kind of some, uh, he's got a teeny weeny bit of uh, Hakeem in him, I guess you could say, the way he kind of does a little bit of a dream shake when he has the ball, and then kind of does a, puts up like a mid-range shot. Not bad. Not bad at all, actually. Yeah, I really like his energy. He's He's got a nice jump shot and everything. Yeah, can throw it down. He, he throws it down in a way that it's more of a finesse more than power. I hope he can bring more of a, a strength to it than he's showing so far. That's the only minor, like, meh kind of complaint, little nitpicky complaint. Kind of soft, putting the bas- putting the basketball through, putting the ball through the hoop there a little bit on the dunks. But, hey, nonetheless, really, really effective. Really uh, excited about his future. Not blown away yet, though. And Wiggins, I'm absolutely not blown away with his preseason at all. I'm only two of seven from the floor in 20 minutes. But again, small sample size, and I'm pretty damn sure that they're telling him to kind of to chill out there and not try to go all out because the last thing you need is 
the uh, second season curse, which a lot of young guys do. They go out there ready, ready to roll in their second season, and then, then they get hurt. And it's like, great. Kind of screws them real good, doesn't it? Um, not too many notables from the game. Shabazz Muhammad shot poorly. Levine shot poorly. And Wiggins shot poorly. So that's disappointing to see that happening. But I guess that's that's how it goes. They were the main three guys other than Gorgie Zhang last season coming in. Towns and, and Zhang, like I said, looking really good. Tyus Jones looking like he's going to the NBDL in this one as he started with four assists. But um, the next game, last Friday, <laughs> yeah, uh, it wasn't Friday. It was, I don't know where it went. I believe it was, oh, it was yesterday against Chicago. Part of me, Saturday. My bad. Uh, the Wolves managed to score 105 points, and they bring the Bulls down to 114. The Bulls did shoot extremely well, though, and Aaron Brooks did what he always does, and that schools the Timberwolves. He just schooled the Wolves again, and wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> it was It was just fantastic. I'm not sure why, but it's just one of those things. Uh, Tyus Jones had an excellent game, at, so, and ones and such. Really good game overall. I love the, the end one, though, when he was he, when he attacked the basket and was floating on air, a la Michael Jordan, kind of, sort of, you could say, as he was getting fouled. He just, he managed to keep his concentration and still put the ball up after the foul. He just floated on air. It was fantastic because he was kind of going from, you could say, the lane to the to almost the baseline. He was kind of, you know, he was kind of sliding in the air, you could say. A uh, fantastic play, ultimately, by Tyus Jones. Overall, a very, very good game for Tyus Jones with 18 points and and, uh, 9 assists. Just a huge game for him. Really liked what I saw. And uh, Towns, not so much in this one, but still not bad, ultimately. A solid game for the Wolves, uh, for for him anyway, at the end of the day. As he wound up with third, still wound up with 13 points. Like the 10 rebounds a lot more than uh, the previous one. Even got uh, three offensive rebounds in the game. Bizleka with with a uh, 11 points again. So he's 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 got 11 points in both games. Very cool. Nine rebounds as well. Hit one three pointer. Kevin Martin's been coming off the bench, and that's a topic we're going to be talking about here in a second. Levine in his first start, nothing much really to say there. Only one of eight from the floor, and it was a three pointer, and that's it. So. <laughs> And Wiggins, 2 of 8, so he actually shot even worse in this one, but at least he made a couple free throws. Mm. Overall, though, the take out of both these games is the defense was pretty bad, and yes, Chicago and Oklahoma City do a really good job moving the ball around and uh, passing guys open, shifting and all that, hitting open threes, and they did a damn good job in both cases. Quite frustrating for all of us Wolves fans, ultimately. And Aaron Brooks put a move on that was quite frustrating as well. Made you wonder what what the hell's going on here. <laughs> kind of the same old story once again. Hmm, McDermott hitting three pointer after three pointer. Oh man, four four of seven. Heinrich made all of his threes. Heinrich Heinrich, <laughs> Captain Kirk making all his shots. I mean, thirteen points in sixteen minutes. Mm. And Paul Gasol blocked Carl Anthony Towns, and uh, what a uh, famous columnist out there <laughs> saying. Basically, up oh, Towns looks like a bust now with, with that one. If Paul Gasol blocked him, and uh, Steve Adventurous, uh, Steve Venturous made uh, fun of that one, saying, "Well, there it is. Basically, there it is. We can't count on Towns anymore." So, no, we can't count on Towns. He's done. He's done. No, <laughs> he, I think he'll get tougher out there. He he is the slightest teensy weensy bit soft so far in my opinion, but I don't think that's who he is. I don't think, you know, I mean, he's not that soft. He's just, he's probably just a little bit timid. His first couple games out there, he'll get tougher, trust me. I'm not worried that he's another Thaddeus Young where I kept calling him soft and it killed us. So don't, don't, uh, don't start with the hate mail on that one, uh, Vince or or anybody else on that one. (laughs) I don't think, I don't think it's going to be a huge problem with uh, Carl Anthony Towns in that sense. So let's get to the, <clears throat> the other topics. I'm having trouble breathing again. I don't know what's going on. It's like I'm getting too old. Kevin Martin, according to Stan Mitchell, will be coming off the bench and Zach Levine to start. And a lot of people are like, yay, really cool to have Zach Levine starting, but but Kevin Martin's a top four like shooting guard in the NBA, or top ten shooting guard in the NBA, and, and he's an, an elite scorer. And this is a topic that kind of pissed me off during the... Uh, it it kind of pissed me off during during the last few weeks here, why are people so sold on Kevin Martin like he's some kind of like he's some kind of great scorer? 
Am I missing something? Or it, I'm having a hard time with this. How is Kevin Martin a great scorer? I mean, okay, okay, now, I'm sorry, what am I saying? Now, he, he's, a, he's a very good scorer, sure. And he can hit three-pointers. But he shot 5 of 15 this night, 3 of 11 that night. And it was like 2 of 9 and 1 of 8. I mean, I mean, it's like one game after another last season. You saw that over and over and over again. Yes, he would get on fire and go for 33 here and there. 28, 25, 29. Stuff like that. 27. And it happened quite a few times and it was wonderful and we took advantage of it and sometimes it helped us win. But how many times did the guy shoot 3 of 15? You know, stuff like that. 30% from the floor or less. And I, I got into a discussion with a few guys on that on one of these Wolf pages out there. Um, they don't seem to want to acknowledge my so, show, so I'm not going to acknowledge their page, even though it's a nice page on Facebook. And that's the farthest I'm going to go with that. In case you're listening, um, give them <laughs> so the, once we can start acknowledging each other, I'll start acknowledging you. That'd be great. <laughs> it really would be. Um, but to see the guy shoot the way he does, be as inconsistent as he is, and the fact that you he can't really attack the basket when he tries to go through traffic, he fails. He'll once in a while get to the line, but overall he fails miserably. He gets stuffed. Um, physically, he, he can't handle it. He's soft. Like, that's not an elite score, in my opinion. He is a spark plug off the bench, in my opinion, particularly with the fact that he's 33 years old. That, that's another side of it. What's wrong with the guy who's one-dimensional, who can shoot the ball? He, he's one-dimensional. He's not a defensive player. He'll make some nice passes once in a while, but not that often. I, I don't know what people are talking about here. You'd think they're describing Magic Johnson or something when he, he's such a great playmaker. How? Is Kevin Martin a great playmaker? Sometimes he's good. Good. There's a difference between good and great. And sometimes people like to drink the Kool-Aid. And that seems to be uh, something that happens in this town. I mean, there's two different kinds of fans in this town. And both of them drive me crazy. <laughs> there's the... Well, luckily there's a group of... Thir- uh, thir- there's a, a third group out there like me that are, are realists. We keep up with the team. We love the team. We're knowledgeable. But we're, at the same time, not afraid to criticize here and there. There's the first group that are Kool-Aid drinkers. They love the team so much, blah, 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 blah. They're unwilling to uh, kind of come off their, kind of come off Mount Everest here with some of these guys. You know, I mean, they're not as good as you think. Like, Garnett is not the greatest player of all time. I'm sorry. He's not even close. Sorry. Kevin Martin is not an elite scorer. He's a good scorer. And then there's the other type of fans that don't give a rat's you-know-what. And they basically think, eh, wolves suck. Eh, wolves suck anyway, so... Maybe I'll watch once in a while, but eh, they suck. So that's that's the other type of fan. <laughs> Both of those types annoy the hell out of me. So there's my my uh, tangent about Kevin Martin. I'm not even going to call it a ser- uh, sermon. I feel <laughs> I feel like I'm a little bit rusty right now, trying to get back in the swing of things. And it's like there are things to talk about, yes, but not enough. I mean, I'm ready for some actual real games here and, and such. There haven't been huge trades. And, and yeah, it's just one of those type of things. Um, but like I was saying, Carl uh, Anthony Towns does look pretty comfortable out there, and he's multifaceted. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, he he, he does look good, but you, you can tell it's going to be a little while. He's young. This is certainly not the Carl Anthony Towns you're going to be seeing two to three years from now, which is what uh, P.J. Carlissimo said about Andrew Wiggins uh, around January last year, before, before, Something clicked, and he and he changed as a player. He started attacking that basket like he was ready to stick a knife in someone. I mean, it was unbelievable the way that guy was attacking the basket, getting to the foul line, and getting ready to do a Dominique Wilkins dunk on somebody. I mean, it, it's really exciting what you, what uh, Andrew Wiggins brings to the table, and I do see the same situation with Carl Anthony Towns as we come into the uh, the next couple of months here. You're going to start seeing some development from him. Tyus Jones is on his way to the W uh, the WNBDL. The NBDL. He got the WNBA finals in the background. The Lynx will be uh they were there will be a game five and the Lynx are gonna win at home in the deciding game in my opinion. I'm they they will win. I don't care how great the fever think they are. I don't care how much crap they can talk. They're not gonna win the championship in Minnesota. And if they do I would be absolutely Mickey freaking pissed. Yeah. But uh, I got that said I'm not nearly as big a Lynx fan as I am a Timberwolves fan, but uh, go Lynx, though. It's nice to see them uh, succeed. 
<sighs> Back to Tyce Jones. That'd be great. Uh, really nice game. Like I said, 18 points, 9 assists. Looked really nice. Yeah, I already mentioned that whole play. But they say he's going to the NBDL, but m- maybe it was more of a rumor. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Are you going to keep three point guards on the roster? I mean, you can. It wouldn't kill anybody that I can think of. I, I can't imagine a situation where somebody the Wolves absolutely need to keep would go uh, would be gone. Other than I'm kind of sad to see uh, the likelihood that uh, Lorenzo Brown is not going to wind up on this roster when it's all said and done. Um, I'm not too happy about that. I feel bad. Nick Wiggins, um, nice to have you on board and all that. But, boy, they're not even letting him play, and that's not a good sign for him. <laughs> Doesn't certainly match up with with his brother in any way or form. But it, it's cool to have him around. Maybe he'll wind up... Um, in, as a scout in, in the front office at some point, maybe he'll go from there. Who knows what's going to happen, or he'll play overseas for a while and come back some point later on. That would be kind of cool to see. Nikola Pekovic is out until December or January. Meh, you know what, whatever. You got Carl Anthony Towns, you drafted him to be the starting center for this team. Good. You already have Gorgie Zheng, who is at the, at the bare minimum a seventh man off the bench as a center, a, as a very talented center off the bench. At the bare minimum. Other people out there think he can't start in the league. Not sure what they're smoking. I think he can. <clears throat> Other than that, that's kind of the preseason for me right now. Without me uh, blabbing on too far and wearing myself out probably. <laughs> wearing the listeners out even more. Wearing you guys out even more. Those of you that are so loyal and so wonderful and have stuck with this show for so long. Thank you and God bless you very much for that. Let's take a break. Let's end segment number one, as brutal as it was. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too brutal. Yeah, I got to talk about some real games. Damn it! You can you can just feel the you can just feel it right now that I'm dying for some real basketball instead of just preseason talk. But eh, it's okay. And it would yeah, it'd be nice if the forecaster was around. But the odds of that happening, are, eh, you know, they'll get better one of these days. So let's take a break and let's hop into that season preview right after this. shop on Amazon? Did you know that you can support this podcast just by doing your normal shopping on Amazon? It's really easy to do. Just go to thesportstuff.com and click on one of the many Amazon pictures. Do your normal shopping and Amazon sees that we referred you and they give us a percentage. We'd like to thank you in advance for supporting thesportstuff.com and please use our Amazon link. Now enjoy the rest of the show. Well, another NBA season is upon us. So who's going to win the championship this year? Is it going to be the Warriors again? Or the Spurs? Oh, please. No, no, please. No, 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 no. Let's see somebody brand new, huh? Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, we'll get to that right now. And we are back on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number two. In this case, a season preview situation. We're not previewing any Timberwolves games necessarily. Yeah, there's preseason games coming up, but why would I preview a preseason game, really? I mean, you hope they play well. You hope guys uh, show signs of this and that. Um, And certain bad things start to go away. That'd be great. Other than that, well, can't really uh, get too... To uh, <laughs> analytical about the preseason, particularly in preview form. That would be kind of weird and pointless, wouldn't it? So, yeah, the NBA previews. Yes, sir. The Eastern Conference. Shall we start in there? We're going to do the old tradition that we've been doing for, for a while. The whole uh, who's going to be a surprise, who's going to be a flop. Well, flop first, surprise second. Um, well, surprise, whatever it is. And in the Eastern Conference, the Western Conference, we'll have the conference final... Uh, <laughs> participants in each uh, conference and then off to the NBA Finals and we'll pick an NBA champion. So let's get on with this. First and foremost, will the Minnesota Timberwolves make the playoffs this season? No. Um, I'd like that. That would be awesome. It would be fantastic. No, it, it's it's a work in progress. The team will be more entertaining. They'll be better to watch. They're going to win 25 to 30 games, in my opinion. Maybe 35 at the top 
if Towns really, really, really develops and Wiggins uh, builds off of last season and all that good stuff, like a lot of good things start happening, and then the next season we could be talking something very, very uh, positive. Maybe a possible playoff uh, appearance in the next season. But uh, let's uh, enjoy this year first. Let's uh, get through this year first. Let's see signs of production and, and progress and all that for this franchise. So, with that out of the way, the Eastern Conference champion, no, the, <laughs> the best team in the Eastern Conference is going to be the New York Knicks, without a doubt. Right? No. that's a, they, they won their first two preseason games, but so did several other teams. One other thing I was going to say in the previous segment, and I forgot to write it down and see what happens when I forget, is uh, when you compare Carl Towns and Emeka Okafer, no, he's kidding, yeah, Emeka Okafer, right? Jaleel Okafer, Jaleel Okafer, now of the uh, Philadelphia 76ers, Jaleel Okafer looks like he's real talented and all that. He looks awfully sleepy out there, you know? I think we took the right guy. Uh, Towns looks better. Like, both of them have this kind of timidness to them right now. Like, it's going to take time for them to develop in the NBA. But my real early, like, first impressions that mean not that much, but they mean a little bit. Towns looks better, in my opinion. Like, his mentality, his approach and all that looks better than that Jaleel Okafer's at this point. So that is another thing I wanted to mention before I got more into the uh, the previous situation. So the Eastern Conference, it's going to be quite interesting to see how certain teams develop. Detroit is, well, they got rid of Greg Monroe. He's off to the Milwaukee Bucks. I like the prospects of the Milwaukee Bucks returning to the postseason. Atlanta, I don't know. Was it a one-year wonder? Are they going to be back down in the fifth, sixth range? Hmm. Uh, does Charlotte have a chance of sneaking into the eighth seed again? How is Toronto going to respond? Washington, teams like that. Toronto and Washington always wind up playing each other in the first round, and, and Washington always wins. That doesn't bode well for Toronto. It doesn't, unfortunately. Chicago, I'm not a fan. I'm just not. And they have a lot of talent, and they hit their three-point shots now with uh, multiple players there that could shoot the rock, huh. quite a few. Derek Rose and the whole situation there with the uh, uh, the chemistry with Jimmy Butler and such, as it seemed like he was just pouting in the in the pl- in the playoffs last year, and when Cleveland just kind of rolled over them in the second round, I don't know what to think about Chicago. Um, a lot a, a lot of that is a lot of that depends on Fred Hoiberg. Can he get the guys to to work together, and can he get that team to improve? Can he be a Eastern Conference's Steve Kerr? Chicago Bulls certainly seem to hope so. Um, they threw a lot of money at him. And, well, if Steve Kerr does work out, watch out for the Chicago Bulls. They might be back at the top of the Eastern Conference again. But to me, there's no doubt about it who's going to be at the top of the Eastern Conference and all said, is said and done. And I'll have to get to that very shortly. The flop in the Eastern Conference, a team that will um, not live up to expectations coming up to this year, that's basically what the flop is. I hate to say this because I really, I, I really like them and all, but I don't know. They gotta, they gotta do it again. You know, they gotta prove it to me. And I, I don't know. I mean, it seems like every time they're good, they come back. The next year, they're not as good. That's gonna be the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, the way they got demolished by the Cleveland Cavaliers in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, I'm not a believer right now, unfortunately. And I really was happy for them. I was really hopeful that they would do something. But I'm not a believer. They will, uh, they will not live up to expectations this year and drop into the fifth, sixth seed range. A surprise team, well. You want to say Milwaukee, partially, because they got all this uh, new talent and such, but their expectations have gone up. And, I mean, Greg Monroe isn't an end-all great player or anything either. He's, he's very good, very valuable, but he has a lot of flaws as well, and he was holding Andre Drummond back in Detroit. So we'll see what Mr. Drummond does in Detroit this coming season. It'll be very, very interesting to see how uh, he continues to develop there. Brooklyn, I'm not a big fan, and that's I'm sorry to uh, Rusty out there. I'm, I know he's not a big fan of the Timberwolves either. He often likes to remind me how they're the worst team in the NBA. And it's nothing personal on either side. We, we love each other. I love the the, uh, the crossover podcast, which is available on thesportstuff.com. Just, just love it to death. And, and I say that with full sincerity. And I know he likes Timberwolves Explosion as well. Um, the Brooklyn Nets, I don't think they're going to make it either. Uh, a, a team that's going to rise up in a big, big way to me is the Indiana Pacers. I mean, I, there's no doubt about it, in my opinion. Would that be a surprise, though? No. 
No, because they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals a few years in a row there. Last year, Mr. Uh, Paul George had a broken leg. So, funny, they missed the playoffs. They almost made it, too. Yeah, that, that team is going to be back in the mix again. Boston Celtics, well, there's not much expectations. So, I don't think they can surprise or flop either way. I don't think they have enough talent to surprise. I think right now, I'm going to lean towards a team that a lot of you don't like. And now, Toronto and Washington... Um, they have talent and all. Toronto and Washington, yeah. I mean, they have enough ability that, well, I don't think they're going to flop, and I also don't think they're going to surprise. I think they're kind of going to be second roundish type teams. So uh, that leaves me with the Miami Heat. I, I think they're going to exceed expectations this year and be back in the mix, maybe fourth seed in that Eastern Conference. Maybe. Fourth, fifth seed range. They're, they're going to be in that mix, though. I've, I, I just have a good feeling about the Miami Heat that they're going to be back in it again. <laughs> You're like, why, Joey, why? Well, they have good players, and to me, it was surprising that they missed it last year. Will Dwayne Wade come back and be healthier? I hope so, and if he does, I think they can be kind of a surprise team. I think they'll exceed expectations, basically, so I, I, I have them as the surprise team right now. Uh, you add Gerald Green, who's really valuable. Uh, Dragic gets to be with the team for a full off season and training camp and all that now. That doesn't hurt. Lou Aldeng, if he stays healthy, is extremely valuable. Uh, Chris Bosh, well, I'm not a giant fan of his, but at the same time, he had a nice season last year. A lot of it kind of depends on like the the backcourt, you know, uh, Dragic and Wade, guys like that. If they can continue to build some chemistry there and uh, build that talent together and, and build that build things together there, along with Lou Aldeng and Chris Bosh. I think they'll. I think they could be a possible fifty-win type of team over there in the Eastern Conference. They even have Amari Stoudemire. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> and I, yeah, and I like Whiteside a lot. You know, now you get a full sample of him going into the regular season this time around. So, yeah, I, I think uh, Miami Heat will be the surprise team in the Eastern Conference. They're they're going to be back in the mix. So let's get to the conference finals in the East. Chicago's not going to be there. Oh no, no, they're not. And I bet a lot of people might pick. Cleveland and Chicago in the Eastern Conference. And I'm not mad at you if, if they do, because Chicago's a type of team that, if Fred Hoiberg works out, they could go to the finals. You just never know. If they do, that'd be extremely disappointing, though. Because as much as you guys out there love to hate LeBron James, and I love to love LeBron James, I'm not in the same camp as you love to haters out there. <laughs> I like what LeBron brings to the NBA. Um, how he attacks the basket, multifaceted. And again, why do you think I love Andrew Wiggins so much, the way he attacks the basket? He's got similarities to LeBron James. Not the same guy, certainly not the same build, but the similarities do exist and persist, in my humble opinion. LeBron James, to me, is the best player in the game, and I like him representing the game of basketball more than the Golden State Warriors, which I mentioned last season on a regular basis into the postseason last year. I like guys that can, you know, make a move on somebody, dunk on them, power their way to the basket more than just launching threes and launching threes and launching threes. That's just how I roll, guys, okay? And a lot of teams are very successful launching threes, including the San Antonio Spurs, which we'll talk about later. But there's more to the Spurs than that, and um, we'll talk about them later. The Cleveland Cavaliers will tip off. I was going to say, yeah, it's like face off, but that's hockey. They will tip off against the Indiana Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals. Cavs and Pacers, and it's going to be a nice matchup. The Pacers are going to be a wonderful resurgence, getting back into it. They're a resurgent team. They're the comeback team of the year, in my opinion, even though you could say the Miami Heat are, but they're not because LeBron James isn't on the Heat. It's more of a surprise seeing the Miami Heat back in the mix without him. That's a surprise, and that would be fantastic for basketball, I think. I mean, why not? People watch the Heat, love them or hate them, they watch them. People watch the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James. Love him or hate him. Good for the game of basketball. He makes you debate him. You love him or you hate him, right? Or you love to hate him. (laughs) Indiana Pacers will be the comeback team of the year, though, in my humble opinion. Paul George looking freaking awesome. Indiana Pacers have a nice group of players. As much as I liked Roy Hibbert when he actually played well in the playoffs, they got rid of him. And you know what? Good on them. And they also added a guy like Chase Buttinger. Oh, and they added Monta Ellis to the team. That's a nice addition. I'm not a gigantic fan of his, uh, admittedly. And you got Rodney Stuckey. I don't like that group very much, but <laughs> uh, we'll see. I mean, Monta Ellis, though, I mean, is a valuable guy. 
I think he makes them significantly better. Lavoy Allen's really a nice, solid player. Like a very poor man's version of, uh, of uh, Draymond Green, you could say. George Hill's all right. They even added Jordan Hill at center. Not bad. Not bad moves. Not bad moves at all. So I, I think the Pacers get to the East Finals, but they do not beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. No, 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 no. <laughs> healthy Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, hopefully healthy. Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving both being healthy. They hope. Oh, and by the way, Anderson Verizal, pardon me, Verizal, Verizal. And you have Shumpert, well, you know, J.R. Smith being brought back, I don't like. Uh, keeping Tristan Thompson was absolutely huge, paramount for the for the success of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mo Williams returning to the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I like that move quite a bit. Nice spark plug off the bench, ultimately. And it, you know, if Kyrie Irving's hurt, at least you have that guy now. And yeah, there you go. And you still have Della Dova. So not bad. Really wonderful group of guys. Quite possibly the best team in basketball going into next season. <laughs> Quite possibly. Yeah, the Cleveland Cavaliers will go to the finals again. They will defeat the Indiana Pacers. And LeBron James will make his sixth NBA Finals appearance in a row. Hello, Bill Russell in that category. Not with the championships, but with the appearances. So, I mean, it's still pretty amazing. And, yeah, I, I like LeBron's chances going into the finals. Hint, hint. And it's not all just a LeBron James love fest. It's a good basketball team, okay? I mean, you guys watched them, and you know they're good. They're extremely good, and now they'll have this this year, this summer, together again. You'll be able to come in this next season. You'd hope, you'd hope it isn't an injury fest for the 99,000th, no, for the, you hope it isn't an injury fest, um, like 99,000 injuries again this, this coming season, and because if it isn't, I think the Cavs easily go to the finals this season. Western Conference, a lot of you call it the Western Conference. And outside of the Cleveland Cavaliers, that is the best in conference. But you also have the Oklahoma City Thunder, and you have the San Antonio Spurs. Ooh, 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 ooh. And you have the Warriors still. And you have the Houston Rockets still, and the Clippers. <laughs> That's five teams right there that are really good. You have the Lakers and Timberwolves, who have the top picks in the draft. But, well, <clears throat> we'll we'll get there when we can. Not quite. Dallas, No. <laughs> New Orleans, I think, is going to be in the mix this year. I think New Orleans moves up. Sacramento could be a low seed, too, getting in. Phoenix, Memphis. My God, a lot of depth. Denver is always a threat, even though they're they're not, but they are. <laughs> Utah is bound to get better, along with Minnesota and such. I think Portland is uh, on their way down. Could I call them a flop? Uh, I, I guess. I mean, who's going to be a flop out of this group? Well, there's two teams that are showing up here in the center of the, the preseason standings that are heavy candidates, one of them is going to be the flop. And it's almost like it's almost like flip a coin because one of them is going to disappoint this year because of all the other talent in the Eastern, in the Western Conference. And unfortunately, it's not the Warriors. They're not going to flop or anything. But I don't think it's either the LA Clippers or the Houston Rockets. One of those two is going to be a, a disappointment this year. They're going to go back into the, the lower bowl, per se, of the Eastern Conference, or Western Conference, pardon me, when they were both in the upper bowl last season. Clippers with the third seed, Rockets with the second behind the Warriors, who it was just quite simply their year. Like them or not, it was their year, and I know you all like them so much. Ugh! And they earned the championship. Okay, so I'm not bitter to that point. They earned it. They made the shots they had to make. Sometimes it's your year. <laughs> I might not agree with uh, the style of offense, or it might not just be something I want to watch as much as I'd rather see something else. <laughs> uh, boy, but there's so much freaking talent in that Western Conference, boy. And I don't think the Warriors can, can do it again to that level. I mean, there's always a chance somebody's going to get injured or somebody's not going to be as good or just somebody else is going to be better. The hunger... I'm sure it's always there, but it's never quite the same. Unless you're Michael Jordan. It's never quite the same. That's not to say the Warriors will only wind up with one championship with the Splash Brothers and such. But I don't think they're going to go back to back. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Warriors win a second or third NBA championship during uh, this, this tenure with Steve Kerr and the Splash Brothers and such. They'll win two or three, in my humble opinion. I don't want them to, but I think they will. They're going to kind of be like the Minnesota Twins with Kirby Puckett, maybe. They'll win like two in five years or two in four years or something like that. It's going to be in that that category. They're not going to... Yeah, I mean, it'll be like stretched out a teeny, tiny, tiny bit. But uh, right now, 
I'm going to... Man, it's real tough when you consider the San Antonio Spurs, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and the Golden State Warriors. I mean, that's a tough, tough trio right there. But we're not quite there yet. So let's go with the flop. I will go with the... Boy, oh boy. Ah, man. The Clippers are hungrier than Houston, I think. So I'm going to say the Houston Rockets are the flop. Maybe that's a potential slap bet with... uh, with uh, Hank and Vince over there on the courtside podcast, which one is them, what? Is, which one of them is going to flop, guys? <laughs> start a slap bet, or maybe should one of you guys start a slap bet with me? I'm going to go with Houston. So does anybody out there want to take the Clippers as the flop? And I don't like the Clippers, and I don't think they're going to win the championship. I don't think they're going to get to the West Finals. But I think the Rockets are more likely to uh, fall in the standings than the Clippers. That's just my humble opinion. I think it's a Chris Paul thing versus a James Harden thing. I mean, Chris Paul's hungrier than James Harden, in my opinion. Then you got the Dwight Howard versus, uh, you know, the Dwight Howards and such. I mean, um, DeAndre Jordan, as much as I don't like him, he's he's hungrier than Dwight, man. Dwight Howard's not hungry. James Harden, he's hungry to a point, but he's not that hungry. He's not as hungry as Chris Paul. It's stuff like that. So Houston will be the flop. Long story longer. Surprise, in the Western Conference, I guess it's going to be... I guess it's going to be the Sacramento Kings. I mean, you got a, a, a nice group of players. You still have DeMarcus Cousins and such. Basically, it's not necessarily a surprise, but I think they will exceed expectations. They will compete for the eighth seed in the Western Conference, possibly. Uh, Phoenix wouldn't be a huge surprise because they're always kind of in that mix, it seems like. They're always kind of hovering around that eighth seed under, um, 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 what's his name now? Uh, Jeff Hornacek, pardon me. <laughs> I know his name, obviously. So, yeah, the surprise team, I'm going to go with Sacramento. Kind of a boring, meh type of pick. Or you could say Minnesota to a point, like we're going to win a lot more games. But it's not a surprise. you got all this talent on the roster, so how's it a surprise? And Portland's not a flop because they lost everybody. They're not supposed to be good. Um, the only other possibility could be New Orleans is a surprise as in terms of they go way, way, way up into like third seed or something. But I'll go with Sacramento is going to exceed expectations right now. <sighs> With a possible... Okay, but then you got Elvin Gentry as the coach of the New Orleans Pelicans. Mm. Yeah, Sacramento for now. <laughs> They'll exceed expectations in the regular season, and that's it. Conference Finals is as hard as it gets. Who boy. Mm. Mm. This one's tough. I, man, just staring at that Oklahoma City logo right now. I think that... Uh, I think the Warriors lose in the second round to the San Antonio Spurs this year. Um, it seems like when teams win a championship and they have a great team and a good group of guys, they tend to lose semi-early the next year. It's not to say they suck, it's just not their year. Like last year, the Spurs lost in the second or in the first round to the Clippers. So, I have the Warriors losing in the second round to either the Warriors, or either, excuse me, either the Warriors, either the Thunder or the Spurs. I'm going to have the Spurs and the Oklahoma City Thunder in the Western Conference Finals again. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be interesting, huh? That's going to be very interesting. Mm. It's going to get real interesting indeed. And then the Spurs will win the Western Conference right now. I, I think the Spurs are going to come out of the West, believe it or not, to play the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. I, 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 I want to pick Oklahoma City, and I'm kind of almost leaning that way, but it just seems like something always slows them down. And the Spurs, I really like that group. Tim Duncan's never going to get old and never not going to be hungry. Greg Popovich is never going to get old, never not going to be hungry. Spurs go to the finals against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And this time LeBron James finishes the job. This time he gets it done. I think the Cavs, this is their season. It's the best team, the the best lineup, (laughs) the best group of players. I think LeBron James' hunger for uh, that third championship will come through this year. And that may or may not be it for LeBron James and rings. Maybe he gets one more with Cleveland. Maybe. And that would be maybe a year or, I mean, that would be maybe two, three years from now. Well, no, not two. It would be, it would be like maybe two years from now he sneaks in one more. Like a miracle run to the finals and they get it done again. But right now, I think LeBron, I, I don't think, basically look at it this way. I don't think LeBron James retires with two rings. I think he retires with three, at least. Three or four. And I think he gets his third this season against the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA Finals. 
long prediction, long story longer. I hope you enjoyed it right there. But to me right now, the Cleveland Cavaliers over the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA Finals. There it is. Spurs get back, but they just don't quite finish it this time. I think that series would go six or seven games without a doubt. And there it is. And it's not because I hate the Warriors. I just think that they're not going to the finals this year. It's just it's just how it goes. Going back to back is almost impossible, man. So there you go. Let's get back to fan interaction right after this. Back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number three, fan interaction. This should be fairly brief, so let's hop to it right now. Trying to keep this show to about an hour or hopefully a tiny bit less, but nah, it'll probably be a tiny bit over. So <laughs> let's get to the Facebook page right away. Uh, you can simply look us up in the uh, search bar on Facebook, Timberwolves Explosion, Minnesota Timberwolves Show. There may be two that come up, one that's a page and one that is a group. Click on the one that's company, not group, company, not group, because that would be the page. Then simply click like and join the conversation. The likes have been sparse lately, and uh, I'd like you guys to start, (laughs) hopefully those of you out there that have never come to the Facebook page, start joining up. It would be very much appreciated. But those of you that have and those of you that interact regularly, thank you very much, and God bless. (laughs) You really do help this show indeed. Um... My traditional little deal where I post it on the Facebook page saying that the new show is out, whatever. Sometimes people comment on it, and in this case, Joseph Phillips out of Australia said, Nice podcast once again, and thank you very much, Joe Phillips, there. That was Super State of the Timberwolves way back on July 11th, man. Then I posted a picture I wanted to have been wanting to put up forever, that uh, at work there's a sign that says Explosion Relief Panel, keep back 50 feet, so I had to put that up there. I always wanted that up there, and I never did put it up there <laughs> it is now only not too many people interacted with that one unfortunately uh, and then on my birthday the Timberwolves signed Andre Miller so they gave me that for my birthday huh it's not too bad Danae Brown out of New Zealand saying we've got two of the oldest players in the NBA now ha ha hopefully he can bring some good veteran insight to help Rubio and tie us out thought he would have wanted to go to a contender over the Wolves though yeah I agree, and I and there I was saying how it surprised me a little bit. Though Flip kept talking about bringing in a veteran, apparently he wasn't kidding on the veteran part, and that's for damn sure. We'll see what Andre Miller does bring. He's pretty old, but he's he's still got some value to him. He can he can actually shoot the ball too, which is nice to see. Um, definitely can bring some mentorship though at the point guard position. There is no doubt about that. He's definitely been in the trenches forever. And I am a little surprised he didn't go to a contender, but maybe it's at a point now he's just too old, I guess. There aren't many 39-year-old point guards in the in the NBA, you know? In fact, he might be the only one at this stage. And, yep, I was talking about uh, please post your kind wishes to Flip Saunders here. God bless you, Flip. We're, sincere, we're sincerely praying for you. A couple comments here. Or actually, it was just Vince saying, uh, Vince Germano saying, hope you kick cancer's ours flip wishing him a speedy recovery and i don't mean just vince like oh it's only him i mean he i mean he's the only one that uh posted there uh and i responded saying amen basically so thank you again vince germano really 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 appreciate it and there were multiple deaths in the summer again again so the death keeps the death toll keeps rising for the uh semi-older nba guys two 76ers died around the same time. I didn't post about the first one, which is about a week before, and I'll mention him really quick. Daryl Dawkins. Daryl Dawkins, Chocolate Thunder. You know, a guy that uh, I had an opportunity to meet, I, or I, I could have. Like, I had the opportunity to meet him, and I didn't take it, and how stupid of me. I could have gone to a, uh, it was a sprint, like, uh, I forget what it was, some kind of, like, three-on-one tournament or something like that in the in the summertime, or some kind of dunk contest of some type. In the summertime a few years back, like Dylan was saying, they, they wanted me to come, uh, some group thing, and I never did. And Daryl Dawkins was like the host, and why didn't I go? How stupid of me. I feel very bad about that to this day. Partially, I'd been working so hard, and I needed to rest so badly, but I should have went. Damn it. And I, I feel bad about that. Moses Malone also uh, dies at 60. Um, really, really sad. I believe Daryl Dawkins was... Uh, 58. So both of them around the same age. They played on a championship team in 1983 when the Philadelphia 76ers nearly went fo fo fo, but it was fo five fo. 
<laughs> basically they they almost swept everybody that's that was Moses Malone's prediction of the postseason that year four 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 or he would say fo 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 <laughs> but now both of them are gone and Moses Malone just a beast in the NBA unbelievable player a lot of times when you see a guy putting up 2020s you think of Moses Malone I mean like these are Moses Malone numbers well that's the kind of guy he was he was just an absolute stud he played a little bit too long, though. I mean, he, I didn't even realize he was still playing in the early 90s of the Spurs. Like, what the hell? He was still hanging on on multiple teams over the course of time. Hell of a career. And um, there it is. Uh, two guys losing the two, guys, two former 76ers this time around. Uh, losing their lives untimely. Uh, both for uh, both for health reasons. Nothing like, uh, you know, nothing tragic. Like, or, you know, like nothing bad, per se. Like a shooting or something crazy like that or car accident like nothing sudden in that sense but still really disappointing sad health reasons like heart attacks unfortunately took place heart failures and such either way very very sad very very uh, very very bad indeed uh, either way all right so let's get to some other posts As I thought I had them already. Here we go. Uh, Tanae Brown talking about Anthony Bennett. Had a 15-10 and 10 at the Pan Am, Pan Am game. Still showing signs of athleticism. Don't think we should give up on him yet. Mm-hmm. He could be good coming off the bench. That was back in July. And he said, oh, Bennett is an absolute monster at the Pan Am games. I know it's not the NBA, but still, if he can take some confidence from it, he could be looking good if he's given time this season, and I was totally in agreement to that, and I never clicked like on those. That's terrible, and I really apologize today. Those were back, way back in July, Um, and I brought that up because, you know, I went that far back because it's significant because, yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second, and then uh, today saying get better flip. That was when it was first brought up in mid-August, and I said amen, brother. Uh, Tanay, here we go. Uh, buyout on AB looking likely. Apparently, I think we're giving up too soon. He was looking good playing for Canada. I guess someone had to go <clears throat> with our depth chart the way it is. Though, and Bazaka is a really good player coming in. I guess it's the right move. It'll be sad to see him go and be a good player elsewhere. <coughs> I, I do agree. And then Vince Germano saying Anthony Bennett to be bought out like the same day as it got more official. And, no, I'm not happy about it at all. Uh, Luke Will saying should do the same with Rubio. So that conversation kind of went elsewhere. And then I said, Pekovic, man. And Vince was saying, oh, my. <laughs> no, uh, I'm not happy about the Anthony Bennett buyout. I do think the Wolves did give up on him too quickly. Unfortunately, most people in this town would tell you the exact opposite. Like, good riddance, about time, blah, 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 blah. Bennett's nothing. You know what? I think he could have been a very high percentage scorer if he played close to the basket and quite simply all that takes is some coaching get him close to the basket get him to play close to the basket and if, if he flat out was unwilling to do that then I guess whatever and it does sound like he was kind of a malcontent behind the scenes and he wanted to leave unhappy about lack of minutes and he wasn't the most coachable guy ever that was the one thing he did always want to settle for those long jump shots I used to think that was Flip's offense having Anthony Bennett do that but apparently that's what Anthony wanted to do um I don't know who to believe on that one, but I, I guess I'll I guess I'll believe Flip on that one <laughs> at this stage. And then the talk about Zach Levine will be the Timberwolves starting shooting guard this year. Yes, sir. Tene Brown posting that up there. And then he says, and I don't mean to be rude, and I really do hope Flip's health improves, but do you think this could be due to him being away from the team, or was this in the plan for the year all along? And I kind of think that, that was a Flip thing. I think Flip did like Kevin Martin, and he did like him starting. Uh, it really did seem it. Uh, Tanae was saying, my guess is that we will see Martin getting moved sometime before the deadline, which will be nice to free up more minutes. Agreed. Uh, Kevin Martin is going to get traded, and maybe he'll go back to the Thunder. You never know. Maybe he'll go to the Spurs or or a Cleveland Cavaliers type of situation. Cleveland Cavaliers, <laughs> there you go. Kevin Martin will be awfully happy there, too. i, I got to tell you, Cleveland Cavaliers should be calling the Timberwolves about Kevin Martin. Now, who we'd get back, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't want J.R. Smith in this team. I don't want him anywhere near the target center unless he's on the opposing team. I don't want no J.R. Smith in here. He's an offense killer. Just screw that crap. <laughs> he's another Rashad McCants who I was never a fan of. I still don't understand a lot of the youngsters out there that like Rashad McCants. I'm extremely confused with that one. 
Extremely. What, what's wrong with you guys? You're, you're the same guys that think Kevin Martin's a superstar. I don't know, man. I don't know about that. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> the Cavaliers should call the Timberwolves for Kevin Martin. Joseph Phillips wrapping up the Facebook page saying, Watching my first preseason game, Minnesota versus Chicago, and this kid, Jones, is a beast on both ends. We might not be a good team just yet, but we have young talent. And with another year or two, the kids, with the, <laughs> the kids, wow, we will be strong. We'll be a strong team. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm thinking. About uh, another year or two, the Wolves will be extremely good. They'll be in the 50s in wins, and hopefully more than that. If Anthony Towns and uh, Andrew Wiggins go on to be the superstars that the, a lot of people do believe they will be, because if they do, this team is on their way to Oklahoma City Thunder and beyond, I think, and that would be freaking awesome. Hmm, that means something. <laughs> we got a long way to go to get there, but let's 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 get there. Damn it. Let's check the Twitter account. I think there's a little bit on there, if humanly possible. At Wolves Explosion. That's at Wolves Explosion to get on the Minnesota Timberwolves, or excuse me, the Timberwolves Explosion Twitter account, which would be wonderful very much to have you follow that. I would greatly appreciate it. As I wait for this to catch up, I'm believing that it will one of these decades. And it looks like mostly just some people following, which is great. And Diego Luis Contreras. Yep, I remember him very well. Thank you very much. And I do believe he's a listener as well. Really appreciate your uh, your uh, inclusion on this show. He says, better than Ricky on his own. And I was saying, oh yeah, Wiggins and Levine combined 4 of 18 shooting last night. And better than Ricky on his own. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's sad. Yep. Because <laughs> yeah, Ricky's uh, shooting percentage isn't so good sometimes, is it? Mm, mm, mm. That's tough, isn't it? Oh, boy. Let's see if there's more on here. And I don't know why this is... Okay. Getting adjusted here. Da, da, da. Welcome, buddies. Follow back. Follow me back. Thank you very much. And I do believe I did. Yes, I did. Yep. How, how nice of me. I did follow back. <laughs> uh, yep. Unbelievable play. Yep. Money pass from Towns back in the summer league. That was awesome. Tenney Brown favorited that. And all that. That's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. Tanae actually showed it to me first. What am I saying? He said, did you see this? And that's pretty much where we left off. Yep. Yep. That's exactly where we left off. As Vince was saying, winter sucks because it was winter time around then. <laughs> yeah, over there. Now they're starting to warm up and we're starting to cool down. Go figure. That's planet Earth for you, isn't it? <laughs> Speaking of planet Earth, this, uh, this Timberwolves explosion uh, planet has revolved around its sun. So, yeah, this is pretty much going to be the end of this episode. And it's been fun getting back into the swing of things. I felt a little rusty. I hope it wasn't too terrible. I hope you guys did enjoy what you heard. And if you did, please do give me a, a positive rating on iTunes. It would be greatly appreciated. Please uh, do follow the Twitter. Like the Facebook page. Invite some friends to listen to the show. Maybe they've never heard of Timberwolves Explosion, but they like basketball. And maybe they would be interested in this show. It would be great to have them on board listening and a shout out to you guys right now if you're listening <laughs> welcome aboard right <laughs> oh thank you again so much for your inclusion out there all of you thank you for your listenership your loyalty Tanae brown vince germano hank mccoy rusty p mac of the crossover podcast man 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 love you guys all so much Oh, man, and there's so many more Joe Phillips out there. Um, uh, Brett Walters out there who used to post uh, off and on on the Facebook page. Hopefully he's still uh, hopefully he's still a listener and still will be willing to post on the Facebook page. Always liked his inclusion out there. Uh, uh, Kamal Hilton, of course, <clears throat> a great, uh, great supporter of this show as well on Facebook and Twitter, and hopefully he'll be on the show as well. I can get off my butt and ask him to get on the show. <laughs> that would be awesome. And, of course, schedules add up, all that. So, hoping for the best there. Enough of my end show rambling. I tend to do this a lot. So, let's wrap this thing up. And we'll be back to talk some more preseason basketball, most likely. Probably get at least one more preseason show in there with a mo- little more to say about kind of current Timberwolves. But had to get caught up on things and preview the, the NBA side of things as well. The, uh, the league side of things. So, thanks again. We'll be back pretty soon, I gotta think. Until then, do take care.